Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Betty Intruder. Welcome back to Fallout 2, where you join me here, having just arrived at The Den, a location which, shall we charitably say, has a bit of a bad reputation. See, the people of Klamath said, don't come here, just do not go to The Den. And the people of Klamath are no delicate flowers. That's a town of gecko hunters and cattle rustlers and prostitutes. Those people are pretty hardcore in their own right, so when they say don't come to the den, let's just say I'm keeping a gun in my back pocket. Very literally, in fact, if I just tap my change weapon button, I do actually pull a gun out that is ready to flip it go. So let's just keep that in my back pocket. By the way, thank you to the people in the comments who actually told me I do specifically need to tell Sulik to put on the leather armor he has in his inventory. So I've told him to do that, and probably, as we're now in town, I should probably tell him to, you know, put away his sledgehammer as well. So here we go, talk about your gear, and then, yeah, put your weapon away, and also I can tell him to remove the armor I've told him to put on. So yeah, this is how we control weapons and armor, lovely. So put your weapon away, please, job done. And now hopefully everyone will be a lot more friendly towards us, because we're both just wandering around without weapons out, spot on. And despite its dodgy reputation, I am rather looking forward to exploring the den because, yeah, there's a bunch of rather interesting things going on here. Becky's, which I can't help but suspect might be a brothel. And we do know that the best prostitute in Klamath did get her training here. So this might be an even better flipping brothel, which would just be magnificent. We've also got over here, hang on, where are ya? Yeah, there's the Brotherhood of Steel. They're worth having a chat to. And I can't help but notice, we've got a junkyard full of cars here. And there's definitely been cars mentioned to us already. We've got ourselves, uh, what was it, a fuel cell. We got out of the car in the rat bit of Klamath. So, yeah, that could potentially be of interest. And Vic himself. So probably let's start off with him. Because our entire quest is to find Vault 13 and retrieve the Gek from it. And he knows where Vault 13 is because he's the one that's been there to get the canteen I'm holding. Except, of course, because I've been doing my research and speaking to everyone in Klamath, I know a little bit more than I might do otherwise about Vic, which is uh, we were sold this canteen as if it were the actual original canteen of the Vault 13 Vault Dweller, the protagonist of Fallout 1. But we know for a fact... This guy's actually a bit of a con man. He's a lazy trader who every once in a while breaks into a vault, grabs a bunch of stuff from it, and then flogs the stuff to religious tribals. And our tribe was apparently a very, very easy mark. This is most definitely not the real canteen of the vault dweller, because there's like three or four more of them in his house. So, pretty sure that's Vic, though technically I don't know that for certain yet, so yeah, he's just being identified as a short man with a thick moustache. But this is presumably his house. So on the bookshelf next door, I can't help but notice, we've got ourselves a diary here. Now I'd say we could probably do with giving that a bit of a read, because I'm pretty sure this guy's a swindler. So best we know everything we can find out about him before we actually speak to him, because we should not trust a word he says. Except as it turns out, this wasn't actually his property of Anna. Most of the pages are either torn or faded. One is still readable. Day 271. Today my mother gave me a gold locket. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever owned. I will never part with it. 100 XP for reading that. Okay, but no actual answers pertaining to Vic. That may just be his next door neighbour, not him. In which case, yeah, let's see your genuine Egyptian mummy, though. That doesn't really look like a sarcophagus to me. That just looks like a coffin, actually. Just a perfectly typical coffin. So, hello there, Vic. Let's see what you've got to say. But as I say, don't trust a word of it. Hello, welcome, salutations. I am the great Ananias. He offers you a slight bow with a flourish. I bring mysteries from near and far, friend. Mysteries from a world beyond our own. Of the netherworld. Okay, he's a total flipping charlatan and a con man. Do not trust this. Alright, what kind of mysteries are we talking about here? I know things that mere mortal man is not meant to know. I, Nyarloth, oh sorry, just got a little carried away there for a moment. I have tales of a ghost that haunts these very grounds, as well as a genuine Egyptian mummy that you can see right here in this marvellous sarcophagus. Right, well let's hear the ghost story, just in case that actually leads somewhere significant in terms of a plot thing. 
There was once a great queen that ruled all of the surrounding towns. She kept her throne by virtue of a special amulet that she kept around her neck at all times. Great stuff, huh? And ooh. Okay, he gave himself the name Anassius or something. And the diary next door was signed from Anna and did mention a gold necklace. Now, by any chance, is the necklace that he's talking about, in fact, the necklace that's mentioned in the diary? Uh, no, 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 let him keep talking. Let's hear the rest of this. The evil wizard poisoned the young princess and took her amulet. She's been wandering around the room next door ever since. Well, that is, just at the witching hour anyway. That's why I keep the door locked. Pretty darn scary. Okay. Interesting. Let's see if we've got anything else. And a mummy straight from the sands of ancient Egypt to the sands of the wastes. Exclusively for you to see. And I'm guessing you're going to charge me money for it, all right? And $25. You know what? I'll do this because I want to get this guy on side because technically there's no proof this is Vic, but I think this is Vic, right? There you go. The mummy! The door to the sarcophagus swings open to reveal a desiccated corpse that looks very much like an ordinary ghoul standing in a poorly painted, chipped and cracked paper mache sarcophagus. Marvellous. So I've just been ripped off for $25, but hopefully that might open some new dialogue with this guy. Well, actually, nothing more from him. Okay. I'm going to see if I can actually... Can I show him the... No, I can't just show him the canteen. Maybe that's not Vic. Okay, I kind of assumed that was going to be Vic, but maybe I've just been taken on a ride by some other con man. Marvellous. Now, back to this room next door, because you mentioned the ghost story. And yeah, there's something on the ground here. Is that a spade? Right there, so... Uh... You see the shovel. Okay, hang on. Back to the diary here. No, it's too frail to keep handling. Right, so... She said she was never going to let it go. But now I've got this shovel. But what are those two things got to do with each other? Okay, bit of a mystery there. He said come back at the witching hour. So, uh, maybe come back at night and see if there's actually anything going on here. Okay, fair enough. I'm right next to the Brotherhood of Steel right now. May as well go say hello to them. Hello, John. Well, you've certainly come a long way from a simple tribesman. You should visit our new California Republic office sometime. You might find it rewarding. Now, if you'll excuse me. Okay, that's all surprising. Who the hell are you? And how do you know who I am? Because I've barely left the vault and I've not really done anything to draw attention to myself yet. And... Okay. Man in metal armor. And I've nothing more to say to you. Can I go inside your office? And there's... You just invited me into your new California Republic office. Okay, fine. I guess I'm not allowed inside after all. Right. Um, where is your new California Republic office? Because if it's not here and you want me to go and visit it, then knowing where it is would be marvellous. Well, apparently this man's name is Joshua, so... Possibly he's a previous member of our tribe who left, ended up joining the Brotherhood, and that's how he knows about me. It's the best theory I've got, because I don't see how else I'd have already come onto this guy's radar, so... Okay. Interesting. Well, the Marcus says leave immediately. He doesn't want to speak to me anymore, so... May as well make my way over here to... Yes, the junkyard, because I can't help but notice this is another car where I can actually interact with it in some way. Here we go. Have a little look-see at this. And this car doesn't appear to be functional. Still, it looks to be in better shape than the other cars in the area. Maybe this one can be fixed. And that's interesting, because I've got a car part, a fuel regulator or something. Hello, does anyone live here and do you know anything about cars by any chance? Hello there, cute stuff. What can old Smitty do for you? I was wondering what you do here. Say, old timer, I have this thingy here that I picked up in Klamath. Aha! More car-related business. Yeah, I'm guessing you, like, run the junkyard or something. Mostly I just keep watch over all this old junk. Only got one thing worth doodly squat. And by any chance is it that car outside? Why, it's nothing other than this Chrysalis Motors Highwayman. They used to say that nothing can stop a Highwayman. They sure build them tough. I'll say that for them. And I'm guessing it doesn't run. But what if you had a fuel cell that I've got for you right now? And if it ran, do you think I'd still be in this shithole of a town? Oh, that's a bit harsh. Well, no fairness, everyone seems to hate the den, so fair enough. And I kind of got settled in here, you're probably right. But I wouldn't mind selling the car, though. 
If someone brought me a battery, no strike that, I'd need a fuel cell controller. Yeah, if I had one of them, I'd sell the car for $2,000. Even install the controller so it'd run right. That sounds interesting. I think I've actually got one of those. So, $2,000 and the cell. So, hang on. Yeah, this fancy old thing. Is this what you're actually looking for? And then old Schmitty taking a looksy at it. Yeah, that looks like a fuel cell regulator. If I had a car that ran, it'd sure improve the mileage on it. Okay, so it feels like that's not what I actually need. It feels like instead, that's just something that will improve the car if I were to get it running. Yeah, there we go, confirmation. What I'm saying is having a regulator is nice, but you need a fuel cell controller. So any chance you can tell me where to find that controller, Schmitty? And that's a silly question. Don't you think if I knew that, then I'd be driving around in the car myself? Fair point. Fair point. All right, then. All right, so far, more questions than answers, to be honest. So let's have a little looksy roundy. See if I can actually find Vic, because I'm beginning to suspect that possibly that guy wasn't Vic. Though, hang on. The sign in Klamath did specifically talk about a mummy. But do I know that sign was ever put up by Vic? That might just have been advertising from this guy. I can't remember whether the sign about the genuine antiques was ever actually signed by Vic. Well, out of the junkyard, and let's see what else we've got going on here. There's a few more houses, so see what's... Uh-oh. I feel like I shouldn't have stepped into this house. This feels like a bad house to have stepped into. Hello, can we speak to you guys by any chance? Lara's the person you should be speaking to. Gangster. Um, would you guys object if I actually went in here? Is this Lara? Yes, you see Lara. Okay. Well, I'm guessing it's okay for me to speak to Lara in that case. Hello, who are you? The name's Lara, I run this gang. You better not be here to cause trouble or you're in for a world of hurt. No, 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 I just wanted to chat, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm just looking around. And actually, merchant named Vic. The name doesn't ring a bell. Then again, I don't keep track of everyone who comes in and out of town. Check with Becky. Everyone ends up going through there. She might know. Marvellous. All right, and while I'm here... Any work you need doing. Depends what you're good at. There is something I'm curious about. If you can find out, I'll pay you a bit. Okay, I'm good at, like, going around, asking questions, figuring stuff out. I'm very good at that, in fact. There's a church east of here. Metzger has some people guarding whatever's inside. Find out what, I'll pay you $200. Okay, that's a decent amount of money just for a bit of investigation. Especially if I might be able to use my speech skill to just talk one of those guards round to tell me what's inside. And yeah, to the east of here, so I'm pretty sure I saw a low transition zone over there. So she doesn't mean leave the town and head east into the wasteland. She just means in one of the zones of the town, I assume. And don't get in a fight yet, I have a plan. Okay, so do not fight my way inside, I see. And while we're actually here, I see no reason why we wouldn't just have a little look at your bookshelves, actually. And ooh, hello, guns and bullets, though... Hang on, does that cap at improving your skill to 100%? I think it might do, actually. So I'm not sure I can actually even use that anymore. No, you learn nothing new. I was remembering correctly. So I'm assuming skill books only get you to 100%, which I've already got myself to. So if I run into guns and bullets in future, just sell them at shops. Okay, next building to the north of here, Tubbies. So you see nothing out of the ordinary. I don't know what a Tubbies is, but I'll go and have a little... Oh! Excuse me. Excuse me, I can't help but notice that you just actually did a little wiggly action at me, like a pickpocket action. Hang the flip on here. I totally had $600 just a moment ago. You've totally just stolen some off me. Can I steal them back off you? Well, officially, this child has nothing on them, so okay, I've been outwitted by a small flipping child. If I go in again, are you about to do the same thing? No, you only try and do it once. Fine. So, who are you? We got ourselves the shop owner. Hello, by any chance? Tubby to my friends. To your not friends, would you be Vic by any flipping chance? Ah, but a shopkeeper. Useful source of information here. So, yeah, the vault. I'm after the vault. So, I have heard of a place called Vault City. Unfortunately, I can't help you with directions. You see, very few of us towns can offer acceptable exchange for the medical services they provide, so most of us have never been there. Gotcha. 
So Vault City, I've heard of this, but I don't really know too much about it really. It's, yeah, a vault that opened up, but just sort of spilled out to become a city with access to really good technology and stuff. So if I were to go there, logically, there might be a vault computer that could tell me the locations of all the vaults nearby, and that will probably be very useful for finding a Gek. And if I want to find out what's going on with the drug trade around here, yeah, would $50 maybe change your mind? Drugs are the basis for this town's economic system, just as another town might use grain or gold. Reading is another prime example of a town fueled by drugs. Damn miners are too high all the time to get any real work done. I've never been there myself, but it is a couple of days southeast of here if you want to check it out. Good. So that $50 has just purchased me the location of the next town I presumably want to visit. And a couple of days travel means, yeah, that's actually not too far away at all. That's actually pretty close. Lovely. Now, who's actually in charge of the town to your mind? And uh, nobody. It's apparently just pure anarchy and drugs. Marvellous. May as well see what he's actually selling. Ooh, is that a Desert Eagle? Yes, it is. 0.44. Together with some Radaway, some Stim Packs, a very nice stuff indeed. Uh, leather jacket, already got some of that. Brass knuckles and ooh, 10mm armor piercing. Okay, might be willing to buy some of that. Some buff out too. That's Psycho. That is some Jet right there. And a pile of money. All right, is there anything we want to potentially sell to you? Probably this here knife. I'd be willing to trade the knife for some ammo. Ah, yes, and the flares I just stole. I'd be willing to trade away three of them. And that's actually pretty valuable right there. And I'm going to keep a beer in my inventory just because, yeah, sometimes people want to be bought a drink to cooperate. So that'd be useful. Now... How much do you think this ammo is actually worth? Because uh, I'd be up for potentially buying some ammo. It is 24 for 171. Okay, that's a bit on the expensive side. What about the armor piercing? If I just want one bundle of 24, even more so. You know what? I need to keep my gun going. I'd be willing to actually do that. What else can I toss in to sweeten the deal? Ooh, the throwing knives are apparently worth like $100 each. Well, that's good news. Yeah, there we go. Knife, two throwing knives, and three flares for 48 bullets to make sure I can keep firing if need be. I'll flip and take it. Ah, uh, yes, and we should actually have a quick word with Suli, because didn't he say at one point that he thought the den was going to be where the slavers who took his sister might be located? They say another born spirit here. Needs help. Okay, the spirit's saying another bone spirit is here. So, uh, one of his people, who logically, if we could find them and help them, might actually be able to, yeah, give us a lead for his sister. And if I had to guess, by any chance would that be what's being kept locked away in the church for some reason? One of his people? Possible, anyway. Alright, that's all the buildings on this side of town, in which case, yeah, Becky's. We were specifically told Becky knows what's what, and that makes sense. She's right next to the flipping town gate. So, all right, we'll head in there, figure out if we can find a Becky, and you better not be about to try and rob me. I was totally just robbed again. They're taking like $10, $20 a time too. This isn't nothing, the stupid little bastards. Right, so it's a casino. Everyone in here seems to be just yeah, an unnamed NPC, with the exception of an attractive young lady at the bar, who I'm guessing is Becky. Hello there. So hi there, I'm Rebecca. Can I get you something to drink? I'm sure you're thirsty after your trip through the wastes. And uh, yeah, Vic, can you point me in the right direction here? I know Vic. Metzger's got him locked up. I'm not sure why though. Right. So when we were asked to figure out what's being locked up at the church, I'm guessing it's actually Vic for some reason. In which case, that gang led by Lara, if they potentially want to get one over on Metzger's gang and storm the church, that could actually be a very, very useful partner for me. Okay, then. And I do need money to make up for the money that keeps being stolen by bloody pickpocket children, so... Any work, buddy chance? Fred owes me $200. If you can collect it somehow, we'll work something out. Any catch here, buddy chance? Well, if you knew Fred, you'd understand. He's owed me money for a long time. I'd written it off as a loss, but if you can get it back, I'd be amazed and grateful. He's somewhere in town, I'm sure, but she doesn't actually know where. Okay, so uh, rough casinos, drugs problems, debt collections. Yeah, I think you can kind of see the relationship between this place and Freeside and New Vegas. You can feel the influence there. Now, best as I can tell, this is the only house I've been into. I've just been robbed again. Bloody children, every single bloody house. 
And further confirmation from a slightly odd character in this house here. Yeah, Metzger runs the Slavers Guild. So, I feel like that's not really a person you want to cross. Like, you know, it's a bad person who needs to be taken down a notch because the Slavers Guild sounds like a bad thing. But I doubt I can take down a Slavers Guild by myself. Though with a bit of luck, Laura might be able to help me with that. Ah, I think I see what's going on here. They work for me. They bring me things. Little things, you know. He's running the flipping gang of pickpockets here. Right, we found this town's bloody Fagin. Got it. Oh, and he's actually got some really good advanced stuff here as well. He's got himself, yeah, shotgun shells, uh, 0.223, 44 Magnum. Okay, he's got a lot of stuff and leather flipping armor. Though I'm guessing that's very expensive. 1,600. Yeah, can't afford that, unfortunately. So, two ways out of this starting area. Over here to the east, which is, yeah, presumably where the church is. These thugs gonna try and stand in my way by any chance. Hey, baby Kate, you looking for Joey? Here I am. And... Am I looking for Joey? Wait, hang on. Was I looking for a Joey? I was looking for... Was I looking for Fred? I don't think I was looking for Joey. I've got some jet, it's great stuff, and brand new from Reno. Do you want some? No, I'm looking for information, to be honest. So, yeah, let's start off with Vault 13, my main mission. Vault 13, never heard of it. Don't tell me they came up with another new chem, nothing can beat jet. No, actually, it's a place, but let's move on, shall we? Yeah, the church and the guards. So you mean Tyler and his gang, they're guarding some shit that came in from Vault City. Big crates. Once in a while you see them get picked up by caravans heading to New Reno. Okay, that's a bit different from what I was told. I thought we were talking about Metzger and Jeff, Vic in a basement or something. Now turn on a gang coming from Vault City heading to New Reno. So if there's something coming from Vault City... We can't be sure what it is, but from what we heard from the trader earlier, it sounds like the most valuable thing in Vault City is medical supplies of some description. And as for New Reno, we know very little about it so far, but sounds like there's a lot of drugs sloshing about here. So, uh, medical drugs for recreational drugs? With this place acting as the drop-off and pick-up point? Possible, but we'll need to investigate that a lot further first. Tyler's just some weasel who screwed all the rest of us out of a sweet deal with Metzger. But flip that shit, I don't flipping care anymore. I could kick his flipping ass though. Lara and him still have some really bad blood. Something about Tyler and her brother. So okay, Tyler and Metzger might be working together, but Tyler cut out the rest of his gang or something. And any chance you could put New Reno on my map, please? New Reno is down to the south a long ways, then east some. There's a lot of action to be made there, but it's pretty dangerous too. I might head back someday. Here, I can show you where it's at on that fancy screen of yours. Spot on. So any chance you're willing to tell me what's inside those big, lovely crates? Hell if I know. Okay, so no hints there whatsoever. Potentially, in that church, we're looking at big crates from Vault City and Vic's being held prisoner by Tyler, who's somehow working for Metzger. I think, anyway. Right, so we can be pretty sure that what we need ultimately is in that direction. So, uh, let's check out the other way first, because, yeah, there's also a way down south over here. And I've entered the residential end of the den. Marvellous. So, this is where lots of people live. The den doesn't actually feel that big, to be honest. I think it might actually be a bit smaller than Klamath. As you probably expect from a residential area, just a bunch of houses. But, there's also a big empty junkyard here, with some mean people blatantly holding guns out in the open. So, uh, that might be of interest. Ah, they're drug dealers, fine. So we may want to go and have a chat to them, just to see what they've got to offer. Okay, run into a kid in one of the little houses here. And he's jumped straight into, are you here because my dad owes you money? I don't know if he's here or not, but if I knew where he was, I'd tell you because maybe you'd beat him up so bad he'd never come home. Now, by any chance, is your dad, uh, Fred? The guy who owes $200 to Becky? Because my dad's not very nice, he leaves me home alone all the time. And when he is home, he's always drunk or he says he's flying on jet, which is a lie, because I never see him fly anywhere. Sometimes he brings a girlfriend home, he's got lots of girlfriends, and he makes me go outside for a while, even if it's in the middle of the night and it's cold or raining. Right, he's a bastard and we'll be dealing with him, got it. And he also tells the kid to go and pickpocket. Alright, fine, and if he refuses, uh, he gets a beating. So, okay, your dad's a dick, and I'll definitely be doing bad things to him if the option presents itself. 
And yeah, there we go. So the other kids who don't live at home, they're with that guy who had the shotgun ammo, the little kind of pickpocket head or whatever, Mr. Fleck. Gotcha. And yeah, Mom, the woman who may be the mother of Mr. Flick, he mentioned her in passing. So everyone calls her Mom. I don't know why, maybe because she's really nice. She's got a diner on the other side of town, to the northeast. So yeah, to the east nearby to the church. My homeless friends go there and she sneaks them free food. Okay, interesting. And yeah, I feel like this kid would totally turn in his dad if he knew where he was, but he doesn't, so whatever. Though I will rob you guys blind if the option... Are you that kid's dad, middle-aged man? Hello, do I know you? It's 11 o'clock, you know where your children are. And it's 11 already. I just wanted to say that. Seriously, do you know where your children are? I have children. Oh, yeah, I do. Right, you're possibly the kid's dad. In which case, why didn't the kid just tell me you were in here? But whatever. So, little mini objective. Find a safe place for all the children to go. And mom over in the east seems like a good starting point for that. And as for the drug dealer, no trouble with him, he just functions as a shop, so stim packs, buff out, jet, all the rest of it. So still no sign of Fred. If he's here, I don't know where he is. And I've had a pretty good Luxy round. I think I've found, yeah, some stim packs, a few drugs, a few things worth exploring for. One thing potentially a little bit of interest, though. While most of the unnamed squatters, if you try and interact with them, just generate little bits of text above their head, this unnamed squatter doesn't. This unnamed squatter actually opens up a little text panel, but there's nothing to speak to them about, so I'm guessing this person might be important for something down the line. Right, in which case, back to the main town, let's head over to the big interesting bit in the east. Alright, so obviously, we've got the church, and we've also got... Ah, uh, wait. A graveyard. And I've got a shovel. Okay, interesting combination. I feel like that might not necessarily make me the most popular person locally, but... Hang on. Gold locket. If I could get hold of a gold locket that was buried, then I could probably sell it to What's-His-Face, the con man with the mummy, for a very, very big pile of money. Far side of the graveyard, as we knew, there's Mom's diner. Ah, and one very big bad thing. The Slaver's Guild. Which also involves, yeah, a big old pile of slaves in bad conditions. Let me out. You know keepers here. We help. We know bad. Right. I'm going to guess that the friend of Sulik that he sensed here, that person's going to have got themselves enslaved. Right. We need to actually raise a little slave rebellion here, I feel like. That's definitely the right thing to do. Also, I accept that I'm about to be robbed by these children with good grace. There we go, I've been robbed again. Here we go, I've found the town brothel, which is just called The Hole, which is possibly the worst thing you could ever call a brothel. I mean, you get the point, but it's still just pretty much completely 100% lacking in class, isn't it? And as for the slaver guild next door, I can't help but notice that, yeah, there's a lovely generator right there. And I'm guessing, if we cut the power, something something electric fences doors diddly diddly dee. And that is just beyond a simple wooden fence, so... Okay, keep that in mind if we need to bring down the power, because we most certainly do not want to be taking on a small army of men in combat armour. That's not gonna fly. You wanna see the boss? Go right in, fine. So I am allowed in the front door here. Now, the boss is presumably... Hello, you are... No, you're Aiden. I think I was told... Was it Metzger who was the head of the Slavers Guild? And Tyler's just running the local business in the church. Something to do with some big crates from Vault City. I think that's what's going on. Welcome to the Slavers Guild. What exactly does your guild do? Oh, I flipping wonder. We do, however, believe that this faction or someone connected to them might know something about Vic. The merchant guy. The one that sells the old Vault stuff. He's flipped, Metzger pretty pissed off with him. Alright, let's just confirm the exact relationships going on here. So, damn, you don't know Metzger, what are you doing in this town if not to see him? He's head of the Slavers Guild, fine, confirmed. And they're not willing to say where they get their slaves from. So, okay, these are bad people, I get ya. And if I choose to try and buy some slaves, I need to speak to Metzger directly about that. He doesn't normally sell to the public, has his hands full with bigger customers, so... Okay, these people aren't just buying and selling the odd person. Someone out there 
is buying in bulk. Right. So, if there was going to be one faction that wanted to get hold of a bunch of humans very, very fast indeed, super mutants, possibly? Could be. Keep that in mind as a possibility. Ah, here we go. Up here, we've got ourselves Metzger, and he might be able to tell us something very, very useful indeed about Vault 13, because yeah, his doorman was implying he's very, very well travelled. But I think that over there is actually Vic. He's not in the church, he's in the Slavers Guild. Now, you doorman, yeah, about Vic. Any chance I could actually see him? He's busy working on something for the boss. Alright, what if I just wanted to ask him a few questions? And he's busy, he won't leave the room, I promise. Any chance I could bribe you? No, no chance whatsoever, fine. So these guys play ball and don't take bribes, which yeah, if the rest of your team was this well-armed and well-armoured, I can see potentially why. He probably is onto a pretty good thing already. And the reason he's being guarded is, yeah, to make sure he's not interrupted. So Metzger's got Vic doing something. He's annoyed him, and now he's working for him. Okay. Let's just actually go through here, have a little chat with Metzger. Do not annoy Metzger, by the way, even if he's very, very rude. And I have someone I'd like to sell. Ooh, am I allowed to sell Sulek? And, ooh, oh dear, I can. I definitely shouldn't do that. And yeah, confirmation. He's mostly collecting primitives and nomads, so he doesn't rob big towns, but tribes like mine would absolutely be on the chopping block, so I don't like this guy very much. Just in theory, can I join the Slavers Guild? You think you can cut it? I don't take it in just anyone. If you flip up, I'll sell you off. You'll have to get a tat on your forehead identifying you as a slaver. Ooh, okay. No, let's, let's not do that, actually. I actually don't want to do that at all. No. Right, let's just get back to, you know, being good people. Still, I really like that as an idea. If you want to join the Slavers Guild, it's flipping for life. They tattoo it on your forehead. There's no leaving at that point because everyone will know you're a slaver. And the moment you're an ex-slaver, and thus you're not under the protection of the Slavers Guild anymore, I'm guessing you're pretty dead very fast. So let's actually speak about Vic instead. So he's the one that specializes in Vault Tech, or so he says. He's my property now. He's not going anywhere. Okay, so that's why you want him, something to do with vaults. Can I see him? What for? Never mind, just don't keep him from fixing that damn radio. He'd better fix it soon. I'm sick of feeding his lazy ass. Okay, so if I was to actually fix the radio, which I 100% can't do because I'm terrible at fixing things, my repair skill is abysmal, but yeah, that actually might get Vic free. Presumably he's working off a debt of some description, so, he sold me a radio that he said would be able to pick up some transmissions. It didn't. I caught his ass trying to sneak out of town before I found out. Bad mistake. No one messes with me. He's lucky to be alive. Okay, what transmissions are you after? The Enclave and new... I'm guessing Reno. Hey, what the hell do you care for? It's business. I need to be sure no one's trying to flip me over. That's all you need to know. Alright, so now... I have got permission to go and see Vic. And I'm guessing if we could actually, yeah, fix the radio, we'd be in good shape. But did I boost my actual repair last level? Repair up to 20%. Still pretty appalling, yes. And now I've got permission. Can you actually open up the door? Lovely. So, door open. I've now got access to Vic. Vic, we need to sort this out. So hello there, Vic. I don't actually like you very much because, yeah, you sold my tribe a holy relic that was actually just a piece of trash and wasn't unique at all. But let's get to the point here. Why have you been locked in this room? It's a long story. I guess you could say Metzger's keeping me here until I fix the damn radio. The crystal shot. I don't have any spare parts. How does he expect me to fix it? Oh, yeah, actually, I already got a radio, which was from somewhere in Klamath. I can't remember, but I stole a radio from somewhere, so... That could be of use. Yeah, what if I just give you this radio? That's great. I'll have the radio fixed in no time. Spot on! So I've actually solved the problem. And now I've solved the problem... No, okay, fine. I need to speak to Metzger first. Metzger's still quite upset, even though we fixed the radio. He's threatening to sell me off. I'll do anything you ask if you can get me out of this mess. Okay, I guess I'll do that. But then you're telling me where Vault 13 is. Okay, so a thousand dollars will get Vic free. 
The problem is that's a fair bit of money, actually. I'm $400 short, and I was kind of saving up to buy a car. But then again, I don't actually have the fuel cell controller yet anyway, so it's pretty irrelevant. So, options here. Presumably, if I join the Slaver Guild, then I could do some work for these guys that would let me just buy this guy, because I'm assuming Slaver work pays pretty well. These guys seem well-armed and well-armoured. Two, I could find a way to take down the Slaver's Guild. I can see the generator off to the side. If I destroy that, potentially lead to slave insurrection, a lot of slaves are going to die, but in the chaos, these guys might all end up dead too. Probably for the long-term good of the wasteland, to be honest. Three, get a thousand dollars elsewhere, and actually just buy Vix Freedom that way. Four, something to do with new Reno and Enclave transmissions. If I can just find some information useful to him, I could presumably trade the information for Vic. So, okay, there are options here. Oh yeah, option five, I could just sell Sulik. But I like Sulik. Sulik's been good to me. And also that'll be a real dick thing to do. Because Sulik's trying to find his enslaved sister right now, so selling him would be a real dick move. Also, any chance there are any other slaves you don't have on display right now? I've always got more merchandise coming in from my other slave camp. Maybe check back later. I'll have something that tickles your fancy. But they're mostly ignorant tribals that all look the same. So if that's not your thing, you might be out of luck. And any chance I could check the stock at the other camp, I'd be willing to pay a premium price. And uh, now you're talking my kind of language. We handle sales here. I suppose an exception could be made as long as you're serious. I'll tell you how to get there. You better keep yourself to yourself. All right, marvellous. So, I've now got directions to the slaver camp and permission to go there. I'm going to work under the assumption that might just be where Sulik's sister is. Alright, let's just focus on the stuff that we already know can make us a nice bit of money. Which is, uh, number one, graveyard right here, and I've got a shovel. And also there's, there's a book right over there too. Hello, what's the book going to be saying? You see, the lavender flower. Okay, have a little look to see at this. What is the lavender flower when it's awake? And, you feel all warm and fuzzy after finishing the book, but gain nothing useful out of it. Marvellous. Right, let's get that shovel out. Right, begin Operation Grave Robbing. Here we go. Stuff. Stuff I can sell. Lots of beer. But actually, before we dig up literally every grave, presumably the headstones, some of them might actually say things. Reader, if cash thou art in need of, dig four feet deep and thou will find a penny. Okay. You just said dig here, basically, and... Alright, that is some drugs and three rocks. I'll take the drugs, I can just sell them. If I could find a gravestone that had Anna's name on it, Mr. Christopher Winslow. Alright, well, yeah, Anna. Something to do with a gold necklace and Anna, and uh, I've lost... Oh, I'm losing karma by grave robbing, which is understandable, I suppose. Let's actually just check out all of these. Anna Winslow. Anna. This is the one. This is the one right here. Or possibly it's someone else called Anna. Because it's not exactly an uncommon name. But whatever. And. Okay. There was nothing actually in the grave. Whatever. But potentially some of these might be trying to tell me something. Here lays Butch. We planted him raw. He was quick on the trigger. But slow on the draw. Now does that potentially mean this grave might have a gun in it. If this guy was a gunslinger. And the answer is no. But we do have drugs. This is all stuff I can sell for money. And next door, there was another one. Here lies the body of Jonathan Blake. Stepped on the gas instead of the brake. Well, I am looking for stuff for my car. So any chances there, like, you know, car stuff in this grave? And $27. I tell you what, I'll flip and take it. Okay, so right now, my karma is 209, which I believe is still positive. It's going down, but I am also a grave digger at this point. So, okay, that may be something people bring up in future. This also may partly get in the way of me losing my virginity. I feel like grave diggers are not necessarily the most desirable people in the world. Oh, I'm also radiated, apparently. Interesting. Right, I probably want to try and buy some Radaway in that case. That's probably bad. I don't see any other gravestones that I actually have yet, anything specifically of note on them. But, as I'm already a gravedigger, 
I may as well kind of keep grave digging, to be honest, because yeah, this is a good source of money. I mean, at the end of the day, in terms of karma, is there any real difference between a person who dug up eight graves and a person who dug up 16? Ah, oh, you see, here's the good stuff. Double flipping throwing knife and a normal knife too. That's a few hundred dollars right there. $32 in another grave as well. Ooh, and a combat knife, even fancier. Oh, 24 armor-piercing 10mm, nice. Oh, and even better, Radaway. I literally need that because apparently I'm irradiated. Possibly from that gecko encounter where there was actually a warning radiation sign, which possibly I should have paid more attention to. Yes, I'm going to do that, actually. There we go. I've lost one current radiation level. Back to my character sheet, please, and... There we go. Good, so I've now got rid of irradiators. Also, let's just actually compare, yeah, the sharpened spear with the combat knife. So, technically, the sharpened spear is better with a damage range of 4 to 13 rather than 3 to 11. But, that kind of depends on the AP cost. Because, yeah, that's 4 or 5. And also, like, 6 and 7 for throws. But this thing is 3 for a swing. That's the thing. Thrusts or swings, and I can actually gain three of them per round. So, arguably, that's more useful to me, because I can actually, yeah, get in more attacks. But, if I'm going to fire once with my gun and then want to attack, it doesn't matter. But then again, hmm, okay, maybe I do want to get rid of the sharpened spear. I mean, to be honest, I'm terrible with the spear. I've always been terrible with the spear. I'll see how much the combat knife is worth. Okay, just had a quick nap till morning, just so everyone's up and about and whatever. Now, by any chance, over in Mom's Diner, are you actually a shop that might be willing to buy some of this stuff I've just dug out of the ground? You are presumably Mom, right? There we go. My name's Mom, I run this place, got the best food north of New Reno too. Marvellous. So yeah, the Vault or Vic, please. Well, now there's Vault City a ways east of here, and a little north, and Vic... Let me think. Okay, so that might be Vault City on my map too, spot on. And yeah, I know she actually runs a shop, so we'll trade with her in a minute, but the orphans, who I have it on good authority, you sneak food to for free. So it's a shame, isn't it? Those poor children living on the streets like that, a lot of them steal to get by from outsiders mostly. So if you catch one trying to relieve you of something, take pity on them. I'm not saying it's right, but it's a harsh world we live in. We all do what we have to in order to make it through the day. So, what do we actually do? Yeah, what can we do about it? Me and you, Mom, how do we fix this? So, Mom wants to set up an orphanage for them, but sadly, the last time she tried, it didn't pan out. Okay, give it another try. So, okay, how can I help with that? I've procured a large building over on the southwest side that, with a little work, could make an excellent orphanage. But a bunch of lowlifes are squatting there and refuse to leave unless I pay an absurd fee. Even if I had the money, I wouldn't give it to the bullies. They'd just use it to poison themselves. I'd go to the authorities, but unfortunately there's no such thing. Perhaps you'd have better luck at convincing them to leave. Fine, that's the big building I saw earlier with the single squatter you can speak to. I'm guessing if I could talk that person round, I might actually be in a position to reclaim the building. But I can't give them the money because I need the money to buy Vic's freedom because, okay, right. To be honest, Mom, I was hoping to make money out of this rather than spending it. I'm sure I could get them out of there one way or another. I'll let you know once they're gone. Oh, I don't really want to murder them. That feels like that's a bad thing to do. And she does have $120, beautiful. How much for the actual combat knife there? 165 or for the normal knife? That's like, that's 40 Okay, what about the sharpened spear? That's $100. Okay, so 140 right there. Let's actually just take the knife off the table, so that's 100 Rest in peace, my friend. You repeatedly let me down and were generally terrible. And I'll also sell her one jet for $20, which she mysteriously will actually take, even though she seems to despise drugs, but whatever. Ooh, and very, very nice indeed. If I take a meal to Schmitty, I get a meal for myself free. Lovely. Ooh, a fancy sandwich with sauce and vegetables. Schmitty is the lucky man. All right, so if I stand nearby to the windows of the church, I can see inside, and uh, I can see all of these crates. All right, various boxes, etc. Tables, uh, a few people, just guards. No one appears to be named here. Okay, so any chance you guys are willing to chat? Who the hell are you and what do you want? Oh, 
Okay, that's a bit of a worrying bluff, actually. That could go a little bit on the wrong side. Do I say the same thing to you? You gotta talk to Tyler here. Ah! You're Tyler. Got it. Well, I may as well give it a go. Let's see if he falls for it. I do actually have decent speech, and... What the hell? His stuff's not going anywhere. He wanted me to check on it for him. And uh, flip it, just go in. Okay, marvellous. So I am actually allowed to go inside now, spot on. So 500 XP, and I'm guessing since it says you managed to fast talk your way inside, that means it's my speech that allowed me to do that. So, we've avoided any form of confrontation, and that is some easy money from Lara, who also might be able to pay me even flipping more if I'm willing to continue cooperating with her. And honestly, now I know that this place is being run and supervised by a guy working for the head of the Slavers Guild, I'm pretty much totally fine with working with Lara to screw these guys over. So check the boxes. 500 XP, right there. Crates filled with various chemicals that are of no use to you. Alright, keep having a little look, see? Yep, yeah, more chemicals, no use to me. Chemicals, no use to me. Fine, so whatever it is, it's chemicals. And we know where it's come from and we know where it's going. Vault City shipping presumably medical related chemicals to New Reno. But why? Well, that's all we can do here for the time being. Let's get back to the main town, deliver Schmitty his meal, and then check in with Lara for some easy money. Also, I'm wondering if maybe giving Schmitty the meal is going to mean he's, yeah, better inclined towards me. Might give me some information, better price, something like that. And no new information, but he's going to give me a stim pack. Lovely. And that's also worth 150 XP and 10 karma. So I believe that's like two graves worth of grave robbing I've managed to just undo there. Lovely. Now I've been robbed by this child once. Am I about to be robbed again as I go in? And yes, it's every time I think you leave the area and come back in, you get robbed again. But I'm going to make that money back because I need to just sell to this guy. Here we go, 200 caps he's got on him, lovely. Right, back to Lara, and I have all the information she needs. Raw chemical compounds in large crates, and I also know where they come from if you're interested. And here's the money. Yeah, tell me more, I'd like to keep working on this for more money. Caravans from Vault City head in, some of it gets picked up by caravans from New Reno. Yep, I know about that, but why does that make sense to you? New Reno's a chem capital around here, they have to get raw materials to make their chems from somewhere, and it makes sense it's coming from Vault City, they've got the tech to produce the chemicals raw. Marvellous. And I am indeed looking for 50 easy dollars please, Lara. I need you to check with Metzger to see if he'd be okay if Tyler and I settled some matters, he'll understand what I mean. Ooh. You want to have a jewel or something? Gotcha. And I've actually already got the money I need right there. $1,100 odd. So, okay. Before we actually spend any of that money, let's just head back down to the potential orphanage and see whether I can resolve that without actually paying because I'm good at speech. So, what do you want? I want you and your friends out of this building. It's come to my attention that Mom intends to turn it into an orphanage, and that seems like a lovely, lovely thing to do. So, okay, what do you want to get out? Mom knows the deal. We're not going anywhere until she coughs up the money. So, a million coins. Sorry, a million. You want a million dollars to go? All right, I'm not sure that's actually going to work, to be honest. And yes, why don't you just show some decency and squat somewhere else. Let's see if my speech gets this to pass. And who are you to say who deserves what? We like it here. You can't make us leave. Listen, you've got two choices. You can walk out of here by yourself or I can remove you by dragging you out one corpse at a time. All right, he's got the choice. And you can't intimidate us. No one's kicking us out of here. We'll fight you for our turf. All right, no need for this to get out of control. Time to clean this place up then. Right, Sulik, we're doing this. Attack! I'm nice and close by. Sulik, get in here and... We don't actually seem to be attacking. Sulik, I thought we were attacking. Is he not attacking? And... Okay, we're not actually attacking. Gotcha. All right, guns out. We're flipping doing this. How many of them are there? There's... There's three in that room. There's two here. I'm really sorry it's come to this. But a million dollars is ridiculous, and the benefit to the town of getting these children a home to improve society in the long run is more important than you guys right now. This is probably a bad thing to do, but, like, we're doing it anyway because I want to help out Mom. Right, guns out. We're flipping doing this. 
bang, and bang some more. There we go. He runs over to me. No, he's just running away at the moment, actually. And some of them are shambling towards us very, very slowly indeed. You're going to be annoying, my good man. And yep, some of them are at this point just running away. They're terrified because they don't actually have guns. This guy's very, very slowly coming towards me. And then is trying to punch me. In fact, how do you have so many action points? You walked from all the way over there to here and then actually punched me like several times. Wow, you've got a lot of action points. Uh, how badly injured are these people from a couple of shots? Severely wounded. He's not been hit at all yet. Suluk, if you'd like to get involved, that'll be spot on. So, bang. And that is 15 points right there. How's he doing? Severely wounded. Another shot might finish him off. And not quite, but he's almost dead. And right now, I think everyone is running. Lovely. Suluk, anytime you want to get involved, that'll be fine. In fact, I've got a nice easy shot at this guy. Finish him off. He's probably dead at this point. And screw it. Take down your friend too. He's actually running now. Lovely. So one, two, three, four, five. Should still have a shot at this guy. And are you dead? I think he might be dead. We good? Yes. Okay. Those guys have now been killed. Lovely. Let's just end combat for now here. Lovely. Sulek, is there a reason you're not getting involved? Is it because I told you to put your weapon away? Sulik, get the sledgehammer out. I actually want you to fight when we get in a fight. Oh, and even better, they had a little bit of booze on them. So I'm very happy to just take all of that. We can sell it down the line. Ah, there we go. Sulik's finally decided to get involved. Beautiful. So Sulik just killed one of them with a sledgehammer right there. I think I can leave the rest of this to him, to be honest. Oh, these guys have got good stuff on them. They've got drugs. They've got new Coca-Cola. And do also remember, the stuff I'm getting off their corpses, I'm going to sell in order to free Vic, which helps Vic, but Vic's also a bad person. Okay, that's not much of a mitigating factor. There we go. I've managed to take out all of the squatters, which is possibly a good thing to do. Mom might not be 100% thrilled by what I've done, to be honest. Now the question is, is Mom going to be furious at me because I murdered all of those people? So, that was good work. You must have worked up quite an appetite. Okay, she's totally fine with it. Oh, wait, hang on. She was rewarding me for delivering the meal. Right, she might be less happy when she learns about the murder. I just hope no one was hurt in the process. I'll get in touch with some friends. We'll get started right away. Ooh, um, right. Thing is, some people did get hurt, but... Oh, hang on, the corpses are still there too. Oh, she's in for a bit of an unpleasant surprise. Still, 500 XP from a trouble there. Lovely. Next up, while I'm in this part of town, Metzger. We need to actually have a chat with him just to check whether it's okay for Tyler and Lara to settle their differences over, yeah, some, like, dead brother or something. What the hell crawled up her ass all of a sudden? I gave her a chance a while back, didn't think she had the balls to try this. Don't play coy with me. I know exactly what she's planning to do. I gave her a chance, but she couldn't cut it. But if she thinks she's up to it... Well, I did say the offer would remain open. So she finally thinks she's able to kick his ass. And ah, she doesn't just want him out the way. She wants to replace him. She wants to join the slavers herself, I'm guessing. Ah, except of course, Tyler isn't a slaver. He's just working with the slavers. That's why the thugs in the opening area were saying Tyler is a punk who cut them out of a good thing. Metzger just needs a gang to guard his warehouse. He doesn't care which one it is. So Tyler stole the deal from Lara, probably by killing Lara's brother, who I'm guessing was the old gang leader. Ooh, I like Fallout 2. You can piece together such interesting backstories. And I've got $1,000, so go on then, let's sort out the Vic problem too. Here you go. And thank you, I'm forever in your debt, what can I do to repay you? Ooh, I need to know where Vault 13 is. Vault 13, there's a Vault City east of here, I trade there sometimes. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. If you don't know where Vault 13 is, where'd you get the flask? Ed's over at Vault City, he's a Brahmin dealer, he was just one of my many suppliers. Vault City's not too far from here. Right. So it turns out he never went in the first place. He just bought it from Ed at Vault City. So that sounds like my next port of call.
And any chance you want to come with me as well? Sure, I'll join up with you. This old fart has one big adventure left in him, I'm sure of it. I'm pretty good at repairing things too, despite what Metzger says. Ooh, I wonder if I could bring this guy back to the toxic caves at some point for him to fix that generator to get the elevator powered so we can access that definitely vault looking thing down there. That might be interesting. So, what can Vic do at this point? Good with small arms, I can handle almost any rifle, shotgun, most small medium pistols. I can use knives and I've also got a pretty good throwing arm, but my aim's not the best in the world. Actually, it's pretty horrible. Right. So probably we just want to get him a gun at some point. So if I run into another gun, put it in his hands. But for the time being, he's got literally nothing on him. Got it. And I believe with Charisma of Four, that's all I'm actually allowed to have with me. Two companions. I think it's a companion per two points of Charisma. So Vic and Sulik is all we flipping got. But yeah, Vic has not got a weapon right now. He's not got armor right now. And he's also a lot more flimsy than Sulik is. Yeah, 85 hit points versus his 70, so we better be a little bit on the careful side with Vic. He could get himself dead very easily. And the problem is I can't just buy him a weapon because I just spent all my money getting him free. But I should still have a couple of spare knives and whatever floating about. I know it's not perfect, Vic, but here's a knife. You're just going to have to make do with that for now. And I will also give you one stim pack to avoid the risk of you dying. And there we go. Back to Lara for an easy $50 right there. You can have your jewel. I was hoping as much. I hear he's been complaining about them lately. Here's your money. Something else by any chance? We can't take them at their present strength. They have extra funding and slightly outnumber us. If you can find some kind of weakness we could exploit to balance out the odds... Okay. Any leads I might be able to follow on that? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you to help. Okay. So, right now, she can't do it, and I've got no tip-offs whatsoever. Alright, let's chat to the people who do seem to be in the know. This guy, who I spoke to at the beginning, he seems to know a lot about what's going on around town, particularly with the Tyler situation. Ooh, and this guy's offering to have sex with me! Okay, who actually is this guy? To be honest, hang on. Oh, it's Joey! Right, is this a friend's joke, given he's doing a how's it going, which is kind of like how you doing? Is this a Joey joke? Do I want to have sex with Joey? I mean, if I don't actually have to pay him... I mean, I did say I wanted to lose my virginity. Go on then, sure! And... What's about to happen? Ooh, hello! You'll be coming back, maybe don't count on it. Wait! Hang on, what... What just happened? Did... Did we have sex? Did I just have sex with Joey? Also, where... Where am I right now? Did we go over to that car to have sex? Oh, flip, we did! I'm no longer a virgin! I lost my virginity to Joey! Yes! I have got a notch on the bedpost! Okay, down over here, let's have a nice little chat to Tyler. See if he's feeling talkative. So, how's it going, Tyler? You trying to annoy me? No. Okay, he's not willing to have a chat at all. What about his friends? And can I actually step inside here again? Yeah, now I've been allowed inside. They don't care about me being inside at all. What are you looking for? Uh, job is a cakewalk. They've checked over the stuff already. Okay. Nothing as far as I can tell that's useful in here. Just holding down shift to check if anything interesting shows up. So, what else do we actually have here, if anything? I don't see anything I can really use or learn here. Nothing at all. Okay, how do I solve this then? Oh, hang on, I spoke to Tyler a second time and he's got something to say. So a buddy of mine won it big at the tables, and he's sharing the wealth if you know what I mean. So he's throwing a party tonight at his place, should be a blast, I'll invite you honey, but it's only for his closest friends. Alright, lovely, so I'm guessing that means some of them are going to be at a party, or the gang's going to be split up. Somehow that's useful anyway. So over to Lara, they're having a party, they're sure to leave a skeleton crew, those should be good odds. We'll take out those of the party after we hit the church. And as for the money, I don't think so. You'll have to come with us if you want your money. You won't have to fight. Just be sure it's not a trap. We'll give you $300 total. Okay, that seems like a fair deal. And I might just get involved anyway. So let's flip and do it, I suppose. Now, be ready. I'm going to get a gun out. And I'm willing to be involved. And here we go. So fighting has begun. They've got guns and... Okay, she's immediately got herself shot. Right, follow, 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 follow. I'm potentially willing to take out a handful of them, if need be. 
And my friends are definitely getting involved too. Marvellous. So, round the corner, round the corner, round the corner. They've all got spears and attempt to stab. A little bit of stabbing. All right. Apparently, it's all on me now. The problem is, if you shoot someone when someone else is in the way, you can hit the other person by mistake. So, it's very important I don't just walk around the corner and take a shot because I might hit Lara. And I'm using a fairly strong gun next to all these bastards, so that could be a problem. Yeah, both Lara and Mark the Guard are wounded right now, so the best thing I can probably do is just, yeah, step around here and be ready to assist if need be, but don't actually get involved, like, immediately. So, someone takes a pot shot at Lara, and now people are shooting other people. Forceful blows, Lara's got a gun, sledgehammers, one person's been knocked down but is not dead, more people run outside, and I think Sulik's trying to get involved, Vic might get involved in a minute too, and it's my go. Right, so, at this point, I can help out, and I'm willing to do so, so, bang, and bang, lovely, in fact... You dead? No, you've just been knocked over. I actually got a critical hit there. That is lucky. So Vic was hit instead of Lara. Vic is now running away. <laughs> Can't really blame him. So, uh, okay. Those guys are now running around. You've been knocked down. They're now shooting me for out for 13. Well, I am just wearing a leather jacket. They're wearing proper armor. Right, I probably do actually need proper armor at some point. Yes. Uh, how badly wounded are you, by the way? Severely wounded. Right, two more shots. Or hopefully... Do the job. One, and two, and not actually dead. Luckily, they're mostly focused on Lara, not on me. Vic's now coming back in. Those guys do have guns. They've got sledgehammers. Everyone's very well guarded right now. I'm taking some real knocks from this bastard who seems like shooting at me. And all I did was shoot at him. This is all very unfair. Still, should be able to get him down. Bloody hell, that guy has got some serious beefiness. I'd like his armor off him when we're done with this, actually. And Vic's just running off again. <laughs> Fair enough, I suppose. Fair or flip enough. Lara misses. Everyone misses. Some people manage to critically drop weapons. I'm nearly dead. I just cannot get this guy down. One person is dead. Hit for no damage. Yeah, he's got some proper armor on him. Keep shooting. Sooner or flipping later... Yeah, he's almost dead. Come on. We can take him down, right? No, not yet. Somebody please finish him off. And he's still being stabbed. No, that's repeatedly missing. I'm very nearly dead, but he missed me. And Sulika's knocked him down with a sledgehammer. Still not dead. What the hell is going on here? Keep shooting him. One of these days. I mean, he was almost dead a moment ago. Keep shooting. Sooner or later. And... Oh, bloody hell, finally. And that actually gets me karma because I'm not really sure, to be honest. I'm replacing one gang of thugs with another gang of thugs. It's not like Lara's people are any more noble or anything, but whatever. And I think there's only one left at this point. So how's she actually doing? Wounded. So let's just actually get around the back here. And if I actually move over to... Hang on. Will this bot be okay? Screw it. I'm just going to move over here just so I've actually got a decent amount of uh, space to actually take a shot. So, luckily, they're... Oh, don't you shoot, Vic. You've been knocked down, but I don't think you're dead yet. But with, yeah, critical hit and 20 on the ground, now she is very vulnerable. I don't think she can avoid any more. Sledgehammer shots coming in like crazy. And you managed to miss a woman who's lying on the ground. Well flipping done. So, three points and out of ammo. Right, I need to reload. Fine. She gets herself back up. She's still going for Lara, but plenty of people are now surrounding her. Vic is just naffing off again because, of course, she cannot stand up to too much of this. She is being hit an awful, awful lot here. And Sulik is just wailing on her with a sledgehammer too. In fact, I think she might actually be dead. Are we good? I think we're flipping good, Lara. Cannot end the fight with nearby hostile creatures. Who's left? Are they yellow? Are they actually... Are they on our side? Are they not just bystanders? I thought they were bystanders. Who else do we actually need to take care of? Because there's no one else. Ooh, job done. Right, we just need to end that turn when Lara had taken a step inside the church. So that's the crew at the church taken care of. But, ah, of course, they need to go to the party in the residential area. They should be drunk by now. We can easily catch them off guard. Are you ready to finish this? No, I need to actually heal up. I'm really, really badly wounded. 
Also, I would love to just actually loot these bodies if that's okay. Because, ah, oh, here we go. Yes, ammo and guns. No armor, though. Sadly, you can't actually pick the armor off them. But this is really good because the guns are stupid valuable. So I'm actually going to make my money back for freeing Vic. And we'll have a spare gun at the end of it to hand over to Vic. So, Vic, where are you? You can actually have a gun. Right, use one stim pack. That gets me up to 26 hit points. That's... That's probably good enough. And also, apparently Vic is in a lot of flipping pain right now. How are you doing, Vic? You are at... You're at 48 hit points, Vic. Suck it up. We need to crack on. Right, so now Vic's got himself, yeah, one stim pack and also one gun with some bullets. So at this point, Vic should be much more capable of contributing. Also, which one of you's actually Lara? You're Lara! Right, let's flip and do this. I'm healed up enough, and with two companions on side, I feel like we've got the firepower to do this. Alright, we've got ourselves a big fight at very, very close range, and I was immediately shot for 13 damage. Right, this is... this is tight quarters right here. So, okay, who's who and... where am I in all of this? Oh, bloody hell, hang on. Which... which one's me? Where am I right now? I'm... I'm not sure. There I am. Hang on, I see myself. Right, so I'm right there, and she's right there, which is a problem. Because that means right now, I'm actually between the two warring factions. And I do not want to be there at all. But actually, escaping's going to be a bit on the, the difficult side. Um, hang on. Where's the furthest away bad person? It's that person there. So I'm going to take one step here... And then if I can, I'd like to take... Ooh, bit tricky. Ooh, hang on, over here. This isn't too bad. One, two. Yes, then I'm just going to take a single aim shot at you at point blank range. And we're going to go right for the head. Boom. So that is seven, not critical. And then I'm going to take one more step away. Because I'm a little bit worried about my health situation now. And I think I was just immediately... Oh, I was just massively killed by a 20 shot there. Okay, let's try that again. Decision. I'm going to put the armor piercing rounds into my pistol. Because I know I'm going up against people with armor. And I'm going to use the second stim pack for safety. Because yeah, this fight seems to begin with me being immediately shot. But thankfully on this occasion, Tyler actually missed. So that's pretty good. Actually on this occasion... The distribution of the room is much more favourable. So I can actually, yeah, get behind these people. There we go. So now I've got friendlies between me and the gang. And that means now I can just take some pot shots right here. So I'm going to start taking some shots at you. But now I should be... Why are you guys so desperate to hit me? And Jess, Sula, you just start wailing on those guys. If you knock him to the ground, that'll keep him out of this. And Vic is just naffing off. I'm not convinced Vic is actually that flipping useful. Right. Plenty of gunfire going on. These guys do seem to have guns, which is marvellous. Okay, back to my turn at this point. And we're definitely winning the fight. This thug is severely wounded. That's Sulik right there. You're actually... That's Lara. She's unhurt. And you're wounded, but you're out of the way. Fine. Best thing I can probably do is just take a double shot at this thug. So one and two. I think he's wearing a leather jacket, not proper armour. I've been very lucky on this occasion. They keep going for me, but they keep missing. And number one goes down. Fine. So now we've definitely got the numerical advantage right here. Once again, they're just going for me. Sulik, yeah, knock them down. Knock them down. Make sure that they are less useful than they would have been otherwise. Spot on. So it's down to... Well, I was about to say down to two. Apparently there's some hostile people over there, including... I think that's a child. I hope we're not about to go and kill a child. Lara, are you sure we're the good guys? Right, I want to be on the far side of the room from, yeah, the main guy, Tyler. So instead, just move over here and then go for some lovely criticals. 82% of the groin. Oh dear. There you flipping go. Guard was critically hit in the groin for 10 hit points. Her childbearing days are in trouble as she collapses in a limp heap. Oh dear. That's, that's a bit on the nasty side, but whatever, eh? Right, end my turn right there. I don't think she's dead, but she is on the ground for a while. And Vic is just basically chilling out on the ground and not doing anything useful. Vic, I feel like you're not helping me right now. And Vic just took the bullet instead of me. Lovely. Continue shooting these people, please. In fact, now she's on the ground, I've got 92 in the eyes. Take the eye shot. And beautiful. 
Critically hit for 33, blind grimaces, and also dead, which is the bigger deal right there. So spot on. And I've only got four action points remaining, so I'll just reload, actually. And at this point, we can basically just focus on wailing on this guy. So just keep shooting him, please. Lovely. Everyone's whacking him with sledgehammers. Yeah, with two sledgehammers going on, we should be fine. And also, yeah, I think someone's knocked him down. So yeah, the sledgehammer blow from Sulik totally knocked him over. And at this point... Ooh, hang on, is he dead? No, Tyler's dead! I think we've actually won. So if I end my turn here... I think we might have to wait for Lara's turn. And ooh, hang on. I think there might be someone in the next room too. Sorry, we might need to go and murder some other people. Well, you say that, but they're all marked in yellow. Are you sure we're actually killing these people? Well, there is definitely some form of fighting going on here. And I think Sulik's getting involved. Vic, meanwhile, is just standing outside... I'm not sure I'll be desperately sad if Vic dies, to be honest. Vic is not contributing here. Right, let's just run over to the door. Can I actually help with any of this? Oh, I could do, but it would be a terrible idea because, yeah, all these guys are actually in the way. So instead, I'm just going to focus on looting for the time being. Here we go. Bullets, guns, and 10 millimeters are valuable. So this has actually been worth doing just for this. And Oh my goodness, that's a Desert Eagle. Oh, that's even better. Stim packs too, so I've made back the stim pack I lost earlier. And presumably there's got to be something good on Tyler himself. Second Desert Eagle, even more ammo. Stim pack and also a thousand XP for helping Lara win the battle. We did it. I can't believe it. We're heading back to the church to take charge. Meet us back there for your reward. Beautiful, which I believe is... Did she say $300? I think she said $300. We got any more corpses here, by the way. I swear there should be another corpse. Also, that Desert Eagle is very, very nice indeed. Same range as the 10mm, but on top of that, damage range of 10 to 16 rather than 5 to 12. Oh, that's a lot flipping better. Minimum strength of 4. Well, I've got that too. Oh, good. Oh, good, 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 good. We've got ourselves a new best friend here. Now remember, we don't want to be using the good armor-piercing ammo all the time, so yeah, just unload that pistol, get the normal ammo, shove that back inside, please. And there we go, we've now got normal ammo in the 10mm, normal ammo in the Desert Eagle as well, and that's a decent gun. And there we go, there's Lara taking possession of the church, and uh-oh. When she says you're going to get your reward... No, she's not about to betray and murder me. Great, she's just going to give me some money. Better and flipping better. Oh, hang on a minute. I just noticed while I was walking past here, Anna's ghost is actually located here. Hello. I'd like to have a chat with Anna's ghost, please. Yes. Hi there. No, that's a desk, actually. We want to chat with the ghost. Speak with the ghost. Yeah. Can we speak with the ghost? There we go. We just had to click on the exact right spot. So... Right, what's the matter? I'm guessing you were burnt down or something. What are you looking for? It's the locket. Yes, okay. So I just got here, I didn't do it, but how can I help you find it? And you can't hear me, can you? Right, so she wants the locket back. That's fine. But what else can I actually find out? I stop and knock at every door, but no one comes, no one hears. Okay, so what do we actually know about Anna? I've dug up the entire graveyard, so she wasn't buried with it. So, where's it gonna be? So, according to the story, an evil wizard poisoned her, but that doesn't give us any information whatsoever on where she might have been, where she died. Dear, oh dear. Now, Mom did say nip back in a few days to check out the orphanage. And my team is a little bit on the wounded side anyway. So, this all works flipping perfectly. How about we just all have a rest until we're all healed up? Lovely. And there we go, three days later. And this is now Mom's orphanage. Nice. Oh, it's looking much better now with all these bunk beds and everything. Is that... No, that's a child over there. Where's mom herself? Well, it's not mom, but it's someone else. Hey, you're the person who helped make this place possible. The people of the dead really appreciate what you've done. Aside from the dead ones, but they're not around anymore, so no one actually cares. And how are the children doing? They're doing fine. Thanks again for everything. Marvellous. Now, does that mean I can now enter shops without actually being robbed every time? Yes, it does. The children have now been removed from the doorway, so I've actually made this a much safer, more pleasant place to live. Lovely. 
And each of these 10 millimeters can be sold for $280. How much for a leather jacket for Vic? That's actually, that's 485. So I could trade out a handful of guns for precisely that. That's not too bad, really. And if I just trade away, yeah, 15 beers I just found sitting around various spots, crowbars, knives, booze, a couple of spare 10 millimeters. I can actually help myself to a big old pile of ammo and a new leather jacket so Vic can officially join our leather jacket crew. Oh my goodness, that's adorable. Though he's wearing it because he's a larger guy, it doesn't really fit him that well. It's more like a little waistcoat on him because it doesn't actually cover up anything. Oh, that's wonderful. Welcome to the crew, Vic. I suspect you're going to die sooner rather than later, but whatever. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I would say it's fair to say our adventure has just begun in full because uh, we're no longer just going from place to place, from Arroyo to Klamath and from Klamath to the Den. At this point, we've got options. We've got all sorts of map markers. The Slaver Camp is now on our map together with, yeah, the Umbra Tribe. I could still go and visit anytime I wanted to. We know Reading's fairly close by, though we don't actually have much reason to go there. All the way down over here somewhere. There's New Reno. Way down in that direction. And over to the east of where I was. There should be. There we go. Vault City. And something unknown nearby. So Vault City feels like the most logical place to go next. But we have options. That Slaver Camp could be a good place to go and visit. If we want to sort out business with Sulek. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we will make that decision next week. Because I would say we have made some really damn good progress this part. We have made a new friend, we have got some powerful new guns, we have become accepted by the Dan, sorting out many of their problems, and most importantly of all, I lost my virginity to a 90s Friends reference in the back of a rusted, broken down old car. And in the end, that is the most important thing of all. Next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will pick our next destination and I will try and find more people to seduce. It's going to be flipping marvellous. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd and this has been Fallout 2. Thank you very much and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here and then we have got... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake. This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.